Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. This video is designed to be used in conjunction with the worksheet which you'll find a link for in the description below. So if you haven't already done so, please click the link, download the worksheet and have a look at that. We're going to be answering question three in this worksheet. We answered question one and two in previous videos and so in this video we're going to consider the third question on that worksheet. So in this video we're answering question three. Because we've already answered questions one and two in previous videos, those videos contain more detail on the reasoning behind the answers to this question. So in this video, we're just going to rattle through the answer quite quickly. If you'd like a deeper insight into the reasons why the answers are the way they are, if you'd like some more explanation on that, then please go back and watch video one of this worksheet. And also, please go back and check my series on the subject of AC theory so that you know where these formulas come from that we're going to use and for a deeper understanding of what they mean. But for now, let's get started by answering these questions. So we've got the same picture on the board here that you'll see on the worksheet in front of you, but we just need to add some more information to this because the question tells us that this circuit is being connected to a voltage of 110 volts and it's being connected to an AC circuit that has a frequency of 100 hertz. So we've now got all of the information on the board that we can glean from this question. So the first part of the question asks us to find the inductive reactance of the circuit. If you've already watched the previous two videos, hopefully by now you should be able to very quickly start almost beating me to the answers here. So we find for this question that XL is equal to 2 pi FL. And if we start putting numbers in, we've got 2 times pi multiplied by the frequency of 100 hertz and then multiplied by the inductance of 2.71 Henry's. So if we volley that into a calculator, so we've got 2 times pi times 100 times 2.71, and that's going to give us an answer of 1,702.743. Now if you're using the Casio FX85 GT+, Plus or the 83 GT+, Plus, you'll see, uh, depending on the settings on your calculator, you might get your answer returned as a multiple of pi. If you press the SD button, then that changes it back into a, a number that is more recognisable uh, for you there. So the answer that's come out on here is 1,702 point, we'll go with point uh, seven four uh, as an answer there. And we can see here, that's correct, two decimal places, and of course, we know that inductive reactance is measured in ohms. So that's the first part of the question answered. The second part of the question asks us to find the total impedance for the circuit. So again, hopefully by this stage, we'll know which formula it is that we're supposed to be using for this. We know that the impedance, the inductive reactance and the resistance in an AC circuit are related to each other via Pythagoras' theorem. So we know that Z, which is the impedance, will be equal to the square root of R squared plus XL squared. So again, it's just a matter of going through and putting the numbers in. So we've got the square root of uh, 1.5 kilo ohms. So bearing in mind that is 1,500 ohms, and that's going to be squared, added to the value for XL that we just calculated, 1,702.74 also squared. So we'll just extend that there. Once again, if we put that into the calculator, we get the square root of 1,500 squared plus 1,702.74 uh, squared, and that gives us a total answer of 2,269. So we've got 2,269, uh, in this case, 0.21 ohms. So that is the total impedance for this circuit. Now the third part of the question asks us to draw a impedance triangle to scale for this circuit. So we're going to do part three now. Now because the numbers involved here are quite a bit bigger than the numbers that we've before, we're going to need to use uh, a much different scale for this. So I've decided that in order to fit this on the board, 
I'm going to use a scale of one centimeter is gonna be equal to 50 ohms. Again, it's very important when you draw your scale triangle when you're answering this question that you write down what the scale is. Now, in the previous videos, we've kind of been able to do this quite simply without doing too much uh, calculation. The scale has been quite simple. However, in this one, the scale is a little bit trickier to work with. So I'm just gonna very quickly demonstrate how we arrive at the values for the lengths that we need uh, for this particular circuit. So the resistance uh, is equal to uh, 1,500 ohms. And what we'll need to do in order to get from the uh, resistance value, the opposition to current flow value, to the uh, physical measurement, the length that we'll draw on the board, we need to think, how do I get from this side to this side? Well, to change this number into one, I would need to divide by 50. So to change this number from a resistance into a length, I need to divide that by 50 as well. So 1500 divided by 50 is going to give me a value of 30, and that's 30 centimeters. So our resistance line will be 30 centimeters long. To calculate the value for the inductive reactants, we do the same thing again. We'll do 1702. I'm not gonna worry too much about the 0.74 because it's, it's gonna make hardly any difference to the measurement that we'd put on the board at this point. Uh, so again, how do I get from my resistance measurement to my length measurement? Well, I take that number and I divide it by 50 to turn it into that side. So likewise, I divide by 50 and that's going to give me 34, just over 34 centimeters. I think it's 34.04 or something. So you can see that that even that two there is only making the slightest little bit of difference to the measurement. And then we'll calculate our impedance length, which is 2,269. Again, I'm not gonna to worry too much about the decimal points uh, for this because it's not gonna make that much difference to my measurement. So 2,269 divided by 50 gives me 45.38 centimeters. So there you can see we've got all the values that we need uh, in order to be able to draw our triangle. And that's how we've ended up with that. Again, it doesn't hurt when you're doing your answer, uh, if you've got this kind of question in your exam, it doesn't hurt to actually show that calculation to show how you've arrived at lengths because it, it actually indicates a, a deep-seated understanding of what you're trying to achieve by this. So let's get this drawn on the board. We've got uh, my resistance line is gonna be my horizontal line. So resistance is always horizontal and I'm gonna draw this line 30 centimeters long making sure I try and leave enough space here so that I don't draw all over the writing that I've done. So we'll get that reasonably level and then draw a line that is 30 centimeters long from there to there. So that uh, represents my resistance. Remember, that's always the horizontal line. So resistance is uh, 1,500 ohms. And then I'm going to draw my inductive reactance line, and that is always vertical. And because it's inductive, I'm gonna draw it pointing upwards. And again, uh, for other explanations on where that comes from, please check out uh, previous videos on Joe Robinson training. So if I now get my 90 degree mark here, right angle goes on the right, and we draw the line vertically. Bear in mind that this is the uh, kind of the standard that I expect from my learners when I'm uh, delivering this material and when I'm marking this material, but make sure that you speak to your lecturer or your teacher uh, before you attempt to answer this question in an exam type scenario and make sure you present the information in the way that they want you to, to make sure that uh, uh, you get maximum marks that you can for this question. So let's just draw a line now. So we're gonna draw the inductive reactance, which is 34 centimeters long. And we draw that vertically there. So that goes straight up. So that line represents our inductive reactance. So that is the XL uh, is equal to 1,702. Again, I can put the 0.74 on the end there. Doesn't make too much difference at this stage. And now what I should find is that if I measure the distance from there down to there, then that line should measure just over 45 centimeters long. So if the maths has worked out, this should be about 45 centimeters long. And there it is, look at that, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, look at that. Just over 45 centimeters, so that is absolutely wonderful. There you go. So that line there is the impedance line, which is 2,269. Again, I can volley on the decimal if I want, just to be accurate, 0.21 centimeters. Right angle goes on the right, and it's always good practice just to mark that angle up theta, because we know from previous videos that that angle is really important to understanding power factor. 
So part four of the question asks us to calculate how much current will flow into the circuit. So we've got part four. And for part four, we're going to say that the current flowing into the circuit will be equal to, just using a little bit of Ohm's law, V over, but we've got to use the total opposition to current flow. So it's going to be V over Z instead of the R that we're used to seeing there. And then we're going to do uh, 110 divided by 2,269.21. So you can see that's going to come out at quite a small number. So we'll grab the calculator and we'll do that calculation. So we've got 110 divided by 2,269.21. So that's coming out at uh, a value of 0.048. Uh, we'll say 0.048. Five for that one. Now, again, looking at that number, uh, that's a perfectly acceptable answer. However, it can be quite helpful to put this into some kind of engineering notation. And on your Casio FX85 GT Plus and other calculators, there is a beautiful button here marked ENG. It doesn't stand for English, as many people take it to mean. It stands for engineering. And if you press that button, it automatically puts it into engineering notation for you. So it's changed it to 48 point, as you can see there, 475, but the key thing is on the end here, it's put it as times 10 to the minus 3. So that becomes uh, 48 point, we'll round it off to the same place we did before, 48.5, that times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Uh, so that current is exactly the same as that current, but we would write that as 48.5, remove the times 10 to the minus 3, and replace that with a lowercase M for milli, so it's 48.5 milliamps. So next on the list, we're going to calculate uh, what voltage would be measured across the resistor and the inductor. So we're going to do this now. So this is part five, and we want to know what voltage would we measure across the resistor and what voltage would we measure across the inductor. Now again, we start off from Ohm's law. So we'd say I is equal to V over R. And in this case, we then transpose that formula to make V the subject. So if we're dividing by R, if we times both sides by R, it cancels that out and we end up with V equals I times R. Now all we've got to watch out for when we're doing this calculation is uh, we use the correct value for R, so the correct opposition to current flow. So to find the voltage across the resistive part of the load, we will indeed use the resistance of the circuit. So we're going to do here our current, which is uh, 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3 and we're going to times that by the resistance of this circuit which is 1500. So 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3 and then we multiply that by 1500 and that gives us 72.75 volts and then in order to calculate the voltage across the inductive part of the load, so we'll put an L in the subscript to indicate that, we would do I times, now we're not going to use R this time because we're calculating the inductive voltage, we're going to times that by XL like that. So once again the current from the circuit, we calculated that a moment ago, we've got 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3. It's important we put it in as that. We can't just put 48.5 in because this is in milliamps and that would give us a wrong answer. We could put it in as that, just 0 0.0485, uh, but I like to use the, uh, the engineering notation for that. So we're going to times that by XL, which is the value that we calculated over here earlier at 17.02, so 1702.74. And then we're going to volley that into the calculator again. So 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 1702.74 is going to give us 82.58 volts when we ran that off to two decimal points. Again, looking at this, this might look weird because that voltage added to that voltage does not give us the total voltage. But for an explanation on that, please see a different video in the AC Theory series. So we've calculated the voltages across the resistor and the inductor. And now part six of the question asks us to calculate what the power factor of the circuit will be. Well, to calculate the power factor of the circuit for part six, we know that power factor is simply equal to the resistance of the circuit divided by the impedance. So we're going to do 1,500 divided by the impedance that we calculated earlier, 
which is 2,269.21. So again, sticking that in the calculator, 1,500 divided by 2,269.21 is going to give us a power factor of 0.661. 0.661. I'm in the habit of rounding power factor off to about three decimal points where it's appropriate uh, because three decimal points is normally a good reasonable value when you're working with uh, trigonometry and we know that that is also a trigonometrical function. It's the cosine of the phase angle. Again, more on that in a different video. So now the final part of this question asks us to calculate the true power of the circuit. So in order to calculate the true power of the circuit, we're going to need to uh, figure out which voltage we're going to be using again. So for part 7 here, to calculate the true power, well, we know that power is equal to current times voltage, current times by voltage, uh, but we need to think about which voltage we're going to be using. True power is the power that's dissipated by the resistive part of the circuit. Uh, so in this case, we're going to use the voltage across the resistive part of the load. So therefore, we're going to say we've got the current of 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And we're going to times that by the voltage uh, across the resistive part of the load, which is 72.75. So that's the resistive voltage we're going to be using. 72.75. And then we put that into our calculator. 48.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 72.75. And that comes out at 3.53 watts, we'll go with. So that's 3.53 watts. So there we go. We've answered all parts of this question. So all that remains for this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.